the Arizona-Mexico border, ranchers want tighter security to be the centerpiece of immigration reform. Something's going on. Dan Bell raises cattle west of the border town of Nogales. We hear in the news that the border has never been more secure, but at the same time, while you have areas that haven't been more that have never been more secure, you also have areas that have. have are, are actually worse now because of the fact that other areas are secure. It's just basically funneled traffic through other areas. Bell and his neighbors often come face to face with illegal border crossers and border patrol operations. Today we were out and we had noticed border patrol agents had apprehended some individuals, but at the same time while they apprehended them, some people had took off and run. We happened to get to the border and witness a few uh, people skirt back over through the border. The agents must stop at the border. They do not have the authority to pursue suspects into Mexico. Ranchers are concerned for their safety. While working cattle, Bell has come across smugglers carrying automatic weapons. And three years ago, a neighboring rancher was shot dead by an illegal border crosser. We're very uneasy when we, when we see people on our lands because we don't know if that guy's just looking for work or if he's committed a murder in another city. Dan Bell's ZZ Cattle Ranch covers 160 kilometers, 12 kilometers borders Mexico. He says illegal crossings happen daily on his land. But you can see that this fence has been cut several times and we've had to repair it. On most of his ranch, a barbed wire fence is all that stands between the U.S. and Mexico. On our ranch, we've got about eight miles of this type of fence. We actually have two miles of border fence that's actually a border wall. It's a bollard-style fence. Very hard to, to penetrate, but people can still climb over it. Here's some electrolytes. So they'll travel with electrolytes when they get dehydrated. We first started to notice on the landscape when we had the influx was the amount of trash that was being left behind. It's basically a drain on our business in, 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 in some respects. You know, it costs us, we have a lot more input costs, fixing fences, um, fixing our water systems that have been broken, putting cattle back to where they're supposed to be because we try and maintain a management system. You know, it costs us about $15 per hundred weight of, uh, of beef that we sell. And so for us on this ranch, it's anywhere from 75 to $105 of additional costs on top of uh, just related to border issues. Bell says bigger fences, surveillance equipment, boots on the ground, and helicopters in the air are important. But he says the most cost-effective provision immigration reform could bring is an access road through remote areas that border agents can patrol. I've seen it get better over time in certain areas, and so uh, we just need to keep moving forward on it. We need to get with the folks that actually live in these areas that have the barbed wire fence as the actual border and ask them if things have gotten better or worse or if they're more secure or not.